All right, it is. It's Wednesday, and it's time for the weekly class. I have some exciting things for you. This is Amani Channel. This is Video Fearless. This is the Video Confidence Accelerator, where I help you get confident on camera. I teach you simple production techniques to help you serve more, share more, to sell more, because at the end of the day, that's all we want to do. So let me uh, check and focus here. So this is a video production 101. So I know that I've had uh, these, I do these classes every Wednesday, first of all, in this group. And if you're tuning in, go ahead and say, hey. If you're watching this on the replay, say replay. And uh, I'm not as good as my girl, Stacia Kennedy, who uh, she's a member of this group, but she always like includes like the, I didn't even put a description in the, <laughs> I should have put a description, but um, it's all good. So let me go ahead and make sure that I can looks like I'm going live so I can see it here make sure I have my comments going so I can see you comment so I see jo Jody Costello what's up AJ what's up brother how you doing so I have some great I have some video goodness that I'm gonna share with you tonight so for all those of you who are new to the group I want to say welcome who are new to the Wednesday night classes I want to say welcome I do these I, I started doing these regularly because you know, you gotta be consistent, you gotta show up, and that's a big part of video marketing, whether you're on YouTube, whether you're on Facebook, whether you have a group, whether you have a community, you know, all these places are, are touch points, and you gotta show up, that's the, that's the one thing I want you to walk away from, is you gotta be consistent, being consistent is really important. So as folks are checking in, go ahead and say hi, leave a comment. What's up, Monty? How you doing, brother? I want to bring you in, in AJ on on a, on a Q and A, by the way. So hopefully you guys are up for that because I think you guys are, are doing an awesome job with your videos, and I think that we can all learn from each other. So I'd love to hear your tips and techniques for you from you, AJ, as well as uh, Monty. I want to thank you guys, and, and as people sort of hop in, uh, let's go ahead and uh, sort of give you the rundown about what I'm gonna be covering tonight. So let me uh, let me see if I can get this going here. Can you see me? Can you see this here? Hopefully you can. All right, so this is video for us. You know what this is though. All right, so this is the video production 101. And my goal for tonight is the real video production basics so that you can market your business to serve more, share more, and sell more with video. That is what I always say because at the end of the day, um, if you're able to share, your, I call it sharing your blessing, right? If you're able to share your blessing with others, that's really a great way to attract people. If you can hone in on your ideal clients for your video, that's really what, what's really key with, with any type of content strategies. Make sure you know who you're talking to and then being consistent, really. And if you're able to do those things, you'll be able to share more and, of course, sell more because um, selling is just the outpouring of your service, I believe. All right, so this is me. I'm a mining channel. Hopefully, you know where you are. I'm gonna make this full screen here. I'm a video geek, I'm a baseball dad, I'm a broadcaster, so I've worked in the media for 20 plus years. Uh, my content's been seen on NPR, CNN, Fox News Channel, HD News, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. I currently work at Fox 5 here in Atlanta, so I do currently work in the industry. You're not talking to a rookie. This is what I. This is how I eat, this is how I keep a roof over my head, this is how my, um, this is what I do. And I've been, uh, I've won a couple awards, I work with some big brands, and I also was nominated for an Emmy. Um, not to toot my own horn, but that's just to show you that I'm, I'm dedicated to what I do, dedicated to the craft. I'm also a mentor and a coach, so that's really my passion. Aside from video production, is helping others. Um, and that's really, I think it's a, I mean, it, you know, it's my passion really to, to serve others, to help others who might be challenged with video, because I know firsthand how challenging video can be. So if you don't think that I've been challenged, I have been. So this is me back in the day when I used to report at Fox 13 in Tampa. And if you know me, you know what was going on in this picture here. I was about to go live. And as soon as the anchor tossed to me, I would my mind would always go blank. And I do this neck snap thing where I look down at my notes and I have to sort of regain my composure. I get really nervous, anxious. I would stutter. I would stumble. And finally, a mentor helped me figure it out. And he was like, you do it, Imani. Like, a lot of the people you work with are... They talk about your bad behind your back because you struggle so much. He's like, what's going on with you? And I was like, eh, no one's really helped me. I was in a big market too. It was my first um, on-air job. Usually in the broadcasting business, uh, folks tell you to go to a small market to work out your kinks and catch your lumps. But I didn't listen. Um. So, oh, cool. So, AJ, I'm just not checking the comments. AJ, so you say you're always down for an interview. Awesome. So, um, 
So I didn't listen to that. Now, I started out in Tampa, Florida, which is the 13th largest market. Atlanta is market number 10. So that just shows you how big Tampa is. And I just really struggled. I would get nervous. I was working. I was a, a small fish in a big pond. And I really just, I really was treading water. I was slowly drowning. And this mentor helped me figure it out. And he helped me discover my authentic voice. And we ended up producing commercials and doing a whole bunch of side products also. So I was able to use my skills on both sides of the camera where I was able to be, be a producer as well as a reporter while I was in Tampa. And by the time I left Tampa, I was uh, pretty much a seasoned journalist. So I didn't work for CNN, but I did a... Um, I was featured on CNN. Let me lose this also. I need to lose this lower third because you know who I is. There we go. Um, so I didn't I didn't work for CNN, but I did a, a guest, uh, like a commentator kind of thing uh, for CNN at one point. And, you know, it's just what can happen. So how can I help you? So these are just some of the folks that I've worked with. This is Chip Dizard, who uh, was really... Um, I did another YouTube project with him a few years back. It was called Web Video Chefs. And he flew down to Atlanta one day because we were shooting some videos for it. And he was like a behind the scenes dude straight up. When I met him, he was like basically a cameraman, kind of an amateur cameraman. He said, Imani, I like being behind the scenes. And we started doing this YouTube channel. He had to put himself on front street. And he was like, he was like, uh, I'm, I'm just not like you. I don't feel comfortable. I don't feel confident. And it showed. And I told Chip, I said, look, Chip, you just got to do you, man. You just got to be you. Don't don't worry about me. Like, you can crush it. You can be yourself and, and do well. And he finally put it, put his fears aside. And, and now he's a, a destination a wedding a videographer, filmmaker, and a photographer. And believe it or not, 75 to 85% of his business comes from his video presence on social media. So, you know, it just shows you what kind of results you can have if you sort of put your fears to the side, right? Get video fearless. I just say get a little less fearful each time you make a video. Um, this is Misty Harris, who um, when I met her, she was didn't know anything about video production. She was uh, she told me she didn't know anything about the, the production side of it. She didn't know how to share a message. And she went through uh, my, my little program and she ended up going live like she became a beast on the live streams and started going live twice a week. She said, I actually look forward to doing a live video. And, uh, you know, it, it doesn't take a long like it took me four years to get comfortable. It, it's like I, I have a shortcut that allows my students to um, start achieving these results really quickly. All right. So um, I want to share that with you just to say that this is what I do. This is how I can help you and just know that you're in the right place if you're just starting with your video production. Um, so I know they like AJ and oh, what's up, Monique? How you doing? Good to see you. Oh, I have Sean Brodus. What's up, Sean? So I got some professionals in the house. I got some uh, YouTubers in the house. So that's great. It's Jody. I, I appreciate all you guys for being here right now. So I want to share this screen with you because these are the kind of videos that you should have in your mix uh, when it comes to um, making videos. And I had another one here. So, um, so the about me video, right? This is like your hero's story, your hero's journey, a thought reversal, something that uh, establishes you as being a credible, relatable expert in your field. Um, a how-to video should share your expertise. You could teach uh, something that you know that your audience is struggling with. You can do like an open box or, or a product review where you're um, sharing something in your field. It can be a, whether it's a software review or actually a, a video of you opening a product. The, people love those videos like a, Talk about the kid vloggers who are like real popular on YouTube, right? They're millionaires just because they're doing these open box type of videos this is real popular. And then another type of video which can be really you should have in your mix is like a testimonial. So whenever you have satisfied customers or clients, you should always think about, um, you know, including a testimonial or having sort of testimony, whether it's a screenshot or actually a video. That's, of course, something that you should add in your social video mix. All right, so what we're going to talk about tonight is the art and science of video. So there is an art and science. Every video really has the art to it, which is the creativity, which is uh, how you shoot it, the techniques you use, the production techniques. And the science of it is the production process. And I'm going to dig into both of those in this, uh, this class because that's really important when you're getting started. You have to understand both the art and the science of video production. All right, so the first thing you got to do is figure out... Um, what type of video you're gonna make. And you can take some notes, you can take a screenshot of this slide. You gotta figure out your background, you gotta figure out what you're gonna share. You're gonna figure out how it's gonna make the audience feel, and then you gotta figure out the call to action. So every video should really have um, these type of elements. So there's some other things, like you should have a hook, and there's a way you should structure your videos, of course, which I'm not gonna get so much into during this particular class. 
but you should figure out what type of video what you're going to share you know where you're going to record um you know how what's going to be the takeaway for the audience i, I love to make people i hope that i make people feel empowered like they can do it uh, because you know video can be very daunting for those who might be concerned about how they look how they sound how they'll be perceived like people suffer from imposter syndrome all those things and you you have to empower your audience because people are going to watch your content because they feel like they can trust you and you're going to provide a solution to their challenges all right and then you should always have a call to action which is your takeaway right what, what can someone do next what is the next step someone can take uh, with you to learn more from you or to connect with you or whatever it may be all right so if it's a YouTube channel you might say hey just simply like or subscribe or you know thumbs up this video whatever it is um, you can have people um, suggest that they do a call with you or opt into a lead magnet or something like that all right now this is really what we're gonna be talking about tonight though so um, I don't know how many, I know Sean probably knows this and maybe a few of you others know this, but this is the video, I call it the video production formula. So this is the process by which you will create all your videos. This is, the pro, this is, the, this is really the science of video production. So there are four elements to it. There is planning, which is called pre-production. And as I'm going forward, if you could, if you guys could, uh, also, if you have any questions for me, please type your biggest questions or your concerns or your challenges, uh, you know, whatever your challenge with, or if this doesn't make sense, please let me know. Um, but you know, I want this to be interactive. So I'm not just going to sit up here and babble at you for the next uh, 30 minutes or so. All right. But planning is really the most important phase. That's where you figure out your messaging, your equipment, your timeline, your deliverables, all that is figured out in your plan. And if your plan is well executed, your shoot's pretty much going to be a breeze, right? Because your plan, that's where you're going to dot all your I's and cross all your T's. And then your edit, you might not have to edit, but if you're like if you're going live, like I'm live right now on Facebook, this this the editing phase, this really, it really doesn't count because Facebook's just going to archive this video and I'm going to have a file that I can upload to YouTube as soon as this recording is done. Uh, the software that I use, which is called Ecamm, will provide a, a video file um, as soon as I'm done with this live stream, which I can upload to YouTube. So there really is no editing involved if you're going live, but if you're if you're like doing a video for YouTube and you're not live, then you might want to do some editing. And you can do some simple editing, complex editing. You can add text, graphics, some narration, music. I mean, you can get as complicated or as simple as you want to do on the edit. I'm going to share some uh, free software with you towards the end of this presentation, so stick around with me. The last phase is to sharing. Where are you going to share your video? So when I first started in the news business, like the only way you could share is either by like DVD, like direct sales type of videos where someone could like watch a commercial and then like, oh, if you want us to send you this DVD, you go ahead and, you know, call us or whatever. Um, or, or you could hire an expensive production crew to come out or you'd have a news crew come out and cover your story, right? That's pretty much the only way you could get something created on video is either to hire a production company to create a video. You could... Um, Distribute it via like direct marketing, direct uh, direct marketing rather, or else uh, you know have some news a news uh, station come out and cover you. But these days the internet has changed all that, so you can of course share your videos on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Pinterest. I mean wherever Instagram. I mean wherever the social network is popular on um, TikTok even, you can share video content. So um, all right, so let's get into the planning. Right, this is a checklist that I created. Come in. You want to come in? No. Oh, are you saying good night? Oh, <laughs> Devin just knocked on my door, so pardon that. So this is a checklist that I created, and this is basically a planning checklist that you can um, you can take a screenshot of this. But this basically will give you the basic. This is a basic checklist that you can um, use whenever you're creating your content. So first of all, you have to have a video idea. You might want to have a brainstorm session. You have to make sure you have all the equipment and know how to use it. So a camera, tripod, lights, mics, etc. Then you might want to have a script, right? You might want to know what you're going to say. So you have your talking points written out. You can write it out verbatim as well, but I don't recommend you memorize your content. Then you're set where you're going to shoot your video, what your background is going to be. Uh, your date and time when you're going to shoot it. 
so you got to know all that stuff and then your video format that's all kind of getting in the weeds your media format media management a lower thirds text music any of those things color correction any of those things that's more of the post-production elements and then sharing it where you're sharing it to youtube video hosting etc you know wherever the network is where you share your content so it's basically a checklist and if any of you guys have any other if there's anything else that i i miss in this process please let me know and by the way also leave in the comments what you want to learn or what um if you do have any questions please don't forget to to uh to leave a question or comment in the comments so i want to share with you just the the standard production script with you so this is just the what a what a standard video production script will look like you don't have to follow this format you can just write things out like a in paragraph form um but with a production script you write all your audio commands on the right column and all your visual instructions go on the left and so your music narration talent lines all your talking points you would have them on the audio side of the audio column and then any sort of text graphics b-roll photos you put that on the left and it should all kind of match so the first thing might be fade up from black on the video the first thing might be on the audio side fade up music or narrator some narrator text about what the narrator is going to say and also kind of match each other so hopefully that makes sense um i can uh you can get some templates if you if you want to because i have some very various examples of scripts now the other kind of script you can write is a storyboard and a storyboard is more of a visual representation of what your script will look like so you use each box to kind of show what the shot is so you could do like stick figures or if you're more of an artist you can get more artsy fartsy with the actual shots or with the um, scenes that will be uh, shown from the the camera and then underneath that you use the underneath lines to write actually what the audio or talent lines would be so each frame will represent a different shot and then you would have your corresponding text underneath it so hopefully that makes sense if it doesn't make sense please let me know what's going on uh, Amanda in Stockholm and stock oh Amanda Stockholm I'm sorry what's up Amanda how you doing um, let me know what you want to learn also and I'll make sure I cover it if you guys have any questions I will answer all your questions towards the end of this presentation all right so let me share some shooting techniques so now that you have the script down now it's time to shoot right I'm, I'm assuming you understand how to plan out your video accordingly so you got to make sure your subject is lit you have to understand how your visuals will be used in the story remember it's a see cow say cow rule so if you're just doing a talking head video that's cool I mean I do plenty of talking head videos um, but if you're going to use b-roll just make sure that if you say it then you can show it that if you if you if you show it you can say it but if you don't say it you don't show it so hopefully that makes sense it's a see cow say cow rule so if you see a cow you can say a cow all right if you don't see a cow you can't say it all right um, and then understand the shots which I'm going to get into now so these are the basic shots you should always use in a video production you should use a wide shot which shows environment or an exterior so if you look at sitcoms right sitcoms will usually have coming out of the commercial breaks or at the beginning of the show they'll show like an exterior of the building where the actual sitcom is taking place that's a wide shot all right a long shot is a head to toe shot um a medium shot is a waist up shot a, a cu stands for close up it shows something very specific and the last one is a cutaway now a cutaway will be a shot that cuts away from the main action the best way i can explain this is that if you're ever watching the state of the union or you know any sort of meeting which is really boring right and the state of the union is the most interesting probably meeting that ever gets on the news but the president would be the main action right the cutaway would be anytime the audience claps and it cuts away from the main action which would be the president talking so anytime people are applauding applauding and the camera cuts away to the audience that would be a cutaway and those come in real handy when it comes to editing like any sort of cutaway like if your main action is a person talking like your cutaway could just be a shot of the hands which could help you in a pinch when it comes to editing so just remember that and if i'm going too fast please ask me to slow down because i do want to definitely add value to you guys and, and help you guys understand these concepts i know i'm going kind of fast but uh, this is going to be archived in a group you can come back and watch this all right now b-roll basics this is really really important so uh, hopefully you all do you guys know what the rule of thirds um the rule of thirds is and what the rule of thirds how it's used so if you do know what the rule of thirds is uh, please put yes in the comments if you don't know i'm going to explain it to you right now so the rule of thirds is, is used by photographers videographers cinematographers 
all the like. And it basically is a composition rule. And what you do is you kind of separate the frame into a tic-tac-toe grid and then you place the object on either the lines or in a specific quadrant of the grid. And when you do that, your your picture will just, it'll naturally just be pretty well composed. And if you just watch any sort of news uh, coverage or watch a lot of films, you will see even photographs, right? You'll see the rule of thirds, just Google rule of thirds. But it's really, really important whenever you're shooting video to use the rule of thirds because if you just use, apply the rule of thirds, your video is gonna look 99% better than all the amateur stuff that's out there. You ask me what the biggest difference between like, amateur footage and professional footage is, it's the composition. It really is the lighting and composition. So um, these are just some examples. So these are actually, um, I use the rule of thirds in both of these uh, shots here, but I do want to talk about the set of the background. Um, so it's important for you to stage your background uh, before you shoot. Um, the set helps you reinforce your brand with visuals or symbols that represent the information you're sharing. You can make it simple or complex. You can see in the bottom frame, I'm just kind of in front of a, a wall that has like a light behind me to create that gradient effect. On the um, the, the screenshot above, I'm, I'm just in a home office, right? It's kind of similar where I'm sitting now. And there's some you know pictures and a, my, my, my tele award is behind me, my diplomas, etc. All right, but you can notice I'm, I'm centered up in the center of the frame. My head's in the top third of the frame because that gives me room at the bottom for a lower third or a title, which uh, I'm not going to get too much in, but it's basically how you frame. And AJ says, yes, live by the rule of thirds. Exactly, exactly. All right, so um, just to show you some other examples of some different framing um some different framing ideas here. So once again, in the top frame, you can see me sit, uh, sitting there in front of my workstation with a title beneath me, which is a title, which is also called a lower third. And then in the bottom frame, I'm kind of framed more to the right of the frame using the rule of thirds. All right. Now it's important before you shoot to always look at your space, declutter it. Uh, you may want to place some objects or symbols behind you. Um, you know, I say don't shoot on a plain wall because that's the most like in news business. We never like that was the like shooting in like we would hate to shoot like in a conference room or something like that. Like any that would we, we want to anywhere we could put some something behind you is always the best thing to do. But before you record, always look at the space with the camera. Make sure um, if anything needs to be moved, if your your um, speaker or subject needs to be repositioned. Um, always, always look before you start recording just to make sure there's nothing out of place. It's really, really important. All right, now I want to get into some live stream best practices because you may just want to live stream your footage, all right? So, um, let me just do this real quick here so I can see my notes. All right, so you want to pick an interesting topic or title. You want to keep your audience in mind. Also, you want to out outline your conversation talking points. So what do I mean by that? Well, um, you need to create a rundown, like some folks say create a rundown, which is actually your run of show, which might be intro, your first uh, subject matter, your first talking point, your second uh, subject, your third subject. Um, you may wanna have like a guest. I mean, you can do all sorts of things with these third party apps with live streaming these days. And then you might wanna have your conclusion, your wind down, your call to action, etc. So kinda of have a, a run of show, what things you're gonna talk about during your particular live stream. Like for this one, I created these slides because I knew that this is what I was gonna talk about, right? This is video production 101. Um, with your live stream, you wanna think about your background, you wanna promote it. So email, um, you know, I, I sent an email out to my list this morning and I encourage them to tune in to this um, live stream. And then you wanna moderate or engage. So, you know, you wanna acknowledge people when they step in the room. Uh, is center frame or right or left frame better? So Donnie, that depends upon the look space. So it's not like any particular side is better. It's more you just want the, whatever way they're looking, you just want a little uh, more area in front of, in front of their, uh, I call it look space where they're looking. Uh, let me see if I can show you here. I'm just gonna babble through this uh, explanation here. So let's say, um, let me do this real quick here. All right, so let's say that this was an interview, right? Yeah, I'm gonna look up. Okay, so if uh, if I was framed, just oh. <laughs> oh, 
blooper. 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 That was a blooper. The Magic of Live video. All right, let me get my act together here now. All right, so, uh, all right, let me get the focus. All right, so let's say that uh, this is the interview and you have it framed this way, right? You want to have a little more space for your, for you looking. Let's say the person I was talking to was right in this direction, right? I was looking right there at them. You want to just have a little bit more room this way and the same this way if it was framed up this way. You want to have a little bit more room that way, all right? Now, if the person is acknowledging the camera, like if it's a talkback situation, you can frame it up in the center where the person's talking right at the microphone or right at the camera. That's when you frame it up to the center. Um, so depending, it doesn't matter which side. Usually when we, in news, what we would do is we would alternate sides so that if you butt the interviews, which means if you cut the interviews back to back, um, you might have one interview looking this way and the other one might be looking that way. <laughs> does that make sense? Hopefully it does. All right, so um, sorry about nearly destroying my camera there, folks. It's always a, a good time on the live stream. You never know what's gonna happen. All right, so let's get back into the slides now. My mouse work. Where's my Where's my cursor? All right, there's this connected. Okay, now we're back in business. So you want to moderate and engage. Remember, you want to talk to your audience, especially if you're live. Hey, Nicole, how you doing? If you have any questions, don't worry. I'm going to answer all the questions at the end of it. Or if you have any questions, just pop them in the chat. Hey, Pilar, how you doing? Good to see you here. And then the last thing you can do with your live streams is you can repurpose and reshare your content. So what I will do after all my live classes like this one is I will um, upload the file to YouTube and I usually publish two videos a week. So one video is like a tutorial on something confidence or you know something to help you make um, be confident when you make your videos. So that's really what I try to help people do. And the second video that I usually upload is one of these uh, classes, which it just creates. It's once I record it, it's already done. So it's pretty simple to to go ahead and upload it to uh, to YouTube. All right, so let me get into some of the editing software. So. I use a Mac, I'm a Mac dude, so some of these programs are more um, Mac native, but so like iMovie is a free program that you can use with your Mac, but Shotcut is a open source program that you can, is free. If you go to shotcut.org, it works for both PC or Mac. Same with DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve is a very robust editor, which I need to upgrade my Mac OS, but I'm about to download it. And, and I've known about DaVinci Resolve, but I've just, I'm an Adobe Premiere guy. Um, but I'm about to do, download DaVinci Resolve because I heard that it's a pretty kick-ass application. It's free, believe it or not. Um, Adobe Premiere is a more um, professional editing program. And then Final Cut for all you Mac users, uh, Final Cut is also an option for you. Um, so those are a range of editing programs. What I will say about editing, don't overcomplicate it. So when you're first getting started, what I suggest you do is... Uh, record a message from beginning to end, especially if it's like a talking head video. Record it from beginning to end uh, without stopping. You know, we'll get two good takes if you're sharing a message from beginning to end. It's okay if you make minor slip, slips or stumbles. Like just treat it like it's a lie, like you're going live, right? There's no redos when you're going live. And then all you have to do is trim the very beginning and the beginning, the very end of a video to where. Um, and you don't even really have to do that. You can actually show people. Some people like to see the person turning on the video camera and stopping it. Um, some folks like to see that. So if you want to just have the whole video, you can just upload the whole video in its entirety um, to YouTube or to Facebook or wherever. But I like to trim the beginning and end just so it's a clean start and stop point and keep it real simple. Now, you can also use jump cut edits, which I can't get into right now. But if you'd like me to do the next class on more editing, we can jump into that. Um, but um, that's basically it. So you just want to polish your video up. That's the main thing about editing. You just want to polish your video up, whether you're adding lower thirds, titles, text, whatever you're adding to your video, um, you can pretty much do it. The last thing you can do is share, right? That's the last part of the video production formula. YouTube, Facebook, IG, LinkedIn, Pinterest. I'm not going to get any sort of strategies uh, during this uh, this live, but um, those are all social networks, which a lot, all of them you can share your content for free. Think about this now. 
broadcast like i work at a tv station they have i can't tell you how much gear how much investment they have in their transmitters their licenses uh, equipment's always having to be upgraded like i don't know how much my station spent on a bunch of new cameras and tripods and microphones from sony we spent so much our, our company spent so much with sony they actually gave us a free cinema camera but now you can use a cell phone you can use a webcam you can use whatever and you can do the same thing. I say you can do the same thing the big boys do yourself. I've been saying this for like since like 2006. So just think about that. You don't have to have the huge investment of a, of a, of a TV station. Everything you have is probably on your computer or on your mobile device. And so you def it's free to share on YouTube, Facebook, IG, LinkedIn, Pinterest, right? Because these networks, they want the content because the content keeps the people coming back and engaged. So just remember that. Now, I do want to share a case study with you because you may be wondering, this is all well and good, Amani, but you know what, what can I do with this information? Well, what I hope you do is start making videos. So um, Charlotte Squire is one of the first people when I thought about creating Video Fearless. She lives in Germany, and um, when I first contacted her, she con well, when I first contacted her, I was like, well, is anybody challenged with making videos? Does anybody want any help? She was like, yeah, I do, because my mind always goes blank every time I go to record. And she was really frustrated. She was ready to quit her idea. She's a law of attraction coach. And she was really frustrated. As a matter of fact, on the first call, I put her on the spot. I was like, Charlotte, what, is law, what does a law of attraction coach do? And as soon as I asked her that, like, she got confused looking. Like, the pressure of the question just, like, got to her. She couldn't respond. She was like, it's happening right now. My mind's going blank. And I felt really bad. Like, I was like, how am I going to help her conquer this problem? So I thought about an exercise. We did a quick little exercise. And 20 minutes later, she was actually able to share a message on camera. All right, so um, that's how quick it can it can work for you if you follow these steps. She says, I have to thank you again, Imani, having fun creating videos. So, like, she didn't have much success, but there she is. She did some editing on her video. This is one she shared on YouTube, on Facebook. Um, some graphics, some, you know, some there's some sort of animation on the video. She has, uh, you know, flowers and, you know, she, she put some thought into what she was creating. And you can do the same thing. You can have the same kind of results. Kathy Berardi, she's a, a, a marketer here in Atlanta. She says, Amani, you're a great instructor and mentor in my professional development as a video producer and digital marketer. The lessons you share are always right on time and easy to put into practice. Out of any other course or workshop I have invested in as a postgraduate business professional, your classes have by far achieved my highest return on investment. So what does this mean for you? Well, it means that you're in the right place and I really hope that you feel like you're in the right place. And what I wanted to do was I wanted to, for those of you who are interested in learning more or working more closely with me, I'm calling this a early bird kind of pre-launch, but I'm starting with what I'm calling my video confidence and marketing accelerator. It's for business owners, coaches, consultants, and course builders. And it's an intensive, it's a eight week program to help you develop your video content to uh, develop your confidence and consistency. So this, is a, it, this isn't this is gonna be open to everyone. There's only a select group of people that I'm gonna work with in this. I'm just gonna be handpicked. You must apply. But if you go to Almani at videofearless.co and send me a message, I will send you a special gift, which is I'll send you my affordable home studio gear list to help you get started. And um, you know, we'll, we'll see if it's a fit for you. I can't say that it's a fit for, it might not be a fit for everyone, but this is really, it's gonna be a, I'm, I'm gonna work very closely with whoever ends up uh, becoming a part of this. Uh, uh, this is the first time I've ever offered anything like this. And so this is gonna be a very, it's gonna be a one, it's gonna be a group program, but it's gonna be a select group of people who I'm gonna work really closely with. So I'm gonna probably have like two calls a week where I'll do like a, a coaching call and then we'll do like an open office hours call where I'll help you work through whatever specific problems you're having. And by the end of it, my goal is to help you have a video marketing strategy, which you can use to, of course, serve more, sell more, to share more. So if this is something that you're interested in, go ahead and email me at amani at videofearless.co. Remember, I'm going to send you my affordable studio gear list. And um, with that, if you have any questions for me, I know I know I have one question from Pilar. So Pilar asked me about how do you get through your talking points? Let me not have another camera blooper too. Let me not do that. 
<laughs> that was so funny. That was ridiculous. So Plar asked me about how do you remember like your lines for an extended period of time? Like if you have a long video that you want to make, like is it best to, how do you memorize what she asked me? And my response was to first of all, watch this live stream because I'm going to answer that question. But the next thing is don't memorize your information. All right, don't memorize your information. This is what I want you to do, Pilar. Instead, write down your talking points or your big picture ideas that you want to cover in your video. And then just have them either on a piece of paper in front of you. Make sure they're legible because that's a problem that I've had in the past where I've forgotten uh, what I'm going to say or forgotten like what I wrote down or couldn't understand my words that I wrote down. And you can just glance down, right? And it'll kind of keep you on track if you go off on a tangent or if you get off track or whatever, or else you can tape them to your um, bottom of your camera, all right, Talk, tape your talking points just to the bottom of your camera so that you can make sure that you stay on track or you stay on track or you have those talking points right in front of you. But remember, you're an expert. You know this information. I'm assuming that if you're watching this video right now, you are an expert. You know what you're doing. You know what you're going to share. You know your information. So just do that. You know, just have your big picture talking points because when you memorize, what it does is you will inevitably not say something exactly how you memorized it and that's going to create all sorts of uh problems for you if you forget to say it exactly how you memorize it because your subconscious is going to be like you didn't say that exactly right then you're going to be like oh, oh. we're going to be worried about that not staying in the moment not staying focused on your video content so just you know write down a few talking points and it'll be good to go all right um any other questions please go ahead and chime me in Rant says, I'm in PC, it's impossible to beat Premiere Pro, but eventually resolve for free is amazing. And that is great feedback. So I think you probably said that, um, AJ, when um, when I was talking about editing programs. And so, yeah, I'm definitely, I'm curious about DaVinci Resolve because uh, I'm using Premiere, I'm going to tell you, see, I'm using Premiere CS6 because I wanted to avoid the subscription but you know cs6 is basically it doesn't have a lot of the export settings anymore because it's a little bit older it's not really supported by adobe anymore so that's why i'm curious about um davinci resolve because i figure it will have some of those export settings so um yeah if anybody else has any questions please put them in the comments Remember, if you're interested in working with me one-on-one -on -one to help you develop your video marketing strategy, your confidence in the above, please uh, go ahead and email me and I will send you my affordable gear guide. I'm going to tease you with it one more time here. That is it. Um, this is all gear that I use in my home studio situation. So you don't need to spend a bundle if you're just getting started. You can really just, uh, you know, the, the, the equipment is you could probably under... 250 bucks you can be completely geared up and start making awesome videos so whether you're using a, a microphone with your smartphone or you're using um, some clamp lights or a ring light or whatever like you don't have to like, use my favorite microphone which is this one can you see this one that's the road into usb but I also have another microphone that i don't use so much anymore um, I'm not going to show it because it's in a drawer, but it is the Audio Technica HT2005 USB mic. There's a whole bunch of different kind of gear you can get. Um, so yeah, if, if no one has any questions, are there any other questions? I'm going to wrap it up. But I, I'm, I'm glad that you all tuned in. Thanks so much for watching this weekly classes of video production 101 on Amani channel. And if you have any questions, go ahead and uh, put them in the book. Uh, put them in the group. I will challenge you to make a video and upload it to the group this week, all right? So whether it's an about me video or whether it's a how-to video, something teaching someone, I will leave it up to you, but I will challenge you to upload and record a video uh, to the group or even share a YouTube link uh, sometime this week. That's perfectly fine. And I, this is something that I did last week. I chose a, that shadow? I chose a, uh, a, a member of the week. So whoever, uh, you know, upload something or, or it's an impressive video. Oh, let's see. So Donnie says, as it relates to look space, any tips to help when I'm behind the camera and interviewing someone to get the framing right? So um, if you are just using like, um, do I start the camera and shift? That's exactly what I'll do, Donnie. So let's say that I'm interviewing someone with my iPhone. What I usually do is I'll sort of frame it up and I'll keep an eye on the viewfinder, but I'll kind of be off 
center a little bit and i'll just and you have to tell them you'll have to tell them that like look at me you have to tell them like make sure you make sure you're talking to me and sometimes you have to tell folks that because they will very naturally uh want it some some folks will just look at the camera so you have to remind them hey talk to me and then you can switch it up hey, hey talk to me just answer you know just, let's just have a conversation it's normally what i'll do um to, for folks and so that's a great question that's what i would suggest you do and uh, if anyone else has any questions please Feel free to chime in. Uh, hopefully, I answered all your video production one-on-one -on -one questions. I really want you to start making videos because video is so powerful. It's the, it's the last. It's almost the end of the month, right? It's the end of the first uh, month of 2020. And I know that a lot of folks might have had their goals for like doing this or that. And maybe video marketing wasn't one of your goals. But I really think it should be if you're a business owner. If you've been challenged with making videos, my goal is to empower you and to encourage you to make videos. I'm always going to do that. You can do it. It's not a big deal. Um, go ahead and, and, and just uh, step out there. It might take you getting outside your comfort zone, but you can do it. You definitely can. It doesn't have to be super challenging. All right. So Pilar, do you have any other questions? AJ, hopefully this answered. Uh, it, it really helped lay a foundation for you. Remember, plan, shoot, edit, share. Those four things. Planning is the most important phase. What is it? It's pre-production, all right? If you do those things, you'll be in great shape. By the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, if you like this, um, this class, please go ahead and thumbs up, like, or subscribe and hit the bell icon. Go ahead and share this with someone who may benefit from it. And I will, um, if you're seeing other videos right now, go ahead and click uh, one of the other videos and I will see you guys in the group. Uh, by the way, if you really enjoy this content, be sure to join the Video Confidence Accelerator. There are links below to all the equipment and to all the gear for watching this on YouTube, if you're watching this on Facebook. You know, just uh, leave a comment if you have any other questions for me, and I'll be sure to answer them. All right, Amani channel. Hope this is really helpful for you. I enjoy sharing. You guys have a great week. Create a video, upload it to the group, and I'll see you in the Video Confidence Accelerator. Talk to you soon. Peace.